Hello and welcome to Become the Teapot. I'm Ian. And I'm not. <laughs> what? This episode, John and I have both watched and read Persepolis by Mijan Satrapi, an autobiographical work about the author's time growing up in Iran during the Islamic Revolution, and we're going to be discussing them with an authority that only two white men can provide. So, what were your first impressions of the film, then? So, my first impression of the film was my television saying it was in French and saying it didn't have subtitles, and I was a little bit worried that I was going to need to learn French, but fortunately the subtitles are embedded in the film. So it was in English, which is good. <laughs> and as I say, I hadn't quite realised that it was a French language work originally, so that was something that came as a little bit of a surprise. The opening to the film kind of retells the prologue to the book. And as we mentioned, the kind of marionettes of the historical figures and the English accent of the Mm. the English figure really made me giggle. But I think my first impression of the movie was how much less funny it was than the book. Yeah, And I understand that in a book you've got 350 pages and in a film you've got 90 minutes. So you have less time in a movie to kind of go off on those tangents and explore the wider context. And I do understand why they made the decision they made, but I was a little bit sad that there were parts of the book that I had really enjoyed and found funny that had not made it into the movie version. Definitely. And also, as we already mentioned, parts about the wider social context and um, I'm trying not to spoil too much but there's a part in the book where they talk about keys that the children are given Mm. and in the movie that is much condensed and i think in the movie they deliver the emotional impact through film techniques so they don't need to go into as much detail to give you the emotional grounding but i was very glad i'd read the book first because it meant i had the kind of knowledge about what was happening in that scene in the movie and i kind of wonder whether i would have felt that was a bit lacking if i had come to the movie first Mm. the animation is beautiful um it's a very beautifully animated movie and there are some really lovely passages which i think again help that lack of explicit context by making up for it with visual cues which is obviously like what you need to do when you adapt a book into a movie so that makes a lot of sense i think the one thing i will say is that because the author is going into less of the surrounding context and also because the movie is not told in the first person and the book is i think the character in the movie is slightly less sympathetic than she is in the book yeah i felt less of a connection to her in the film version than i did in the book version for sure definitely i think she's less flawed in the film as well the character in the comic book it's very much warts and all it does show these moments where she's done things that are you know sort of heinous acts getting the man arrested on the steps for instance in the film was very much downplayed and and they still showed him ogling her whereas in the comic i don't think there was any indication that this chap had done anything wrong really so elements like that i think the film almost whitewashed some of those elements and, and i think missing out on those smaller moments those like you say those funny moments those moments of banality interspersed with the grand moments if you cut out the little moments the small moments that just make up everyday life all you're ending up with is this sort of overarching storyline the basic bones are there but you lose a lot of the depth of character yeah and likewise i say you lose elements like the commentary on her wealth and class as well you lose a lot of aspects like that you would be forgiven for watching the film and thinking that everyone was from that same sort of social stratus you wouldn't think that there was differing levels and that these people were particularly well off because you're only given the basics and the comic is so much about those little stories it's so much about all of the people she meets along the way the people getting out of prisons the children her roommate in vienna who just doesn't get a look in in the film all of those things are lost so yeah. although there's more focus on marjan like you say there's less connection to her because you lose the connection that other characters would have with her yeah i think her parents in particular are a lot less interesting in the film yes than they are in the comic yeah i'd agree with that the nan is still great yes well and, and stuff like in the book her mum goes to visit her in vienna and in the movie that just doesn't happen and that's a really interesting choice because i think it changes quite a lot of the context of some of the interactions she has during that time but also there's a scene where someone is found drowned which in the movie can kind of work out 
the rough shape of what's happened but in the book it actually tells you how that's gone and i thought in the movie it was weird that they included that scene but none of the context to properly explain it ditto there's a scene in the film with the i can't remember her name but the cleaning lady crushing grapes and in the book i thought it did a much better job of explaining who she was and why she was uncomfortable with this but in the film they just have this one scene where she's crushing grapes and you're like we don't really have much of a connection to her so why have you you've got a joke but you've kind of divorced it from the setup which is odd yeah, there's a couple of moments like that. I'm trying to remember what the other one I thought of was, but there was one towards the end of the film that was a punchline without the setup. Yeah. And perhaps if, if I had not read the comic book, I would have laughed a bit more at that. But I just thought when it came up, I thought, well, hold on, we haven't we haven't had the whole plot line leading up to that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there were very funny moments in the film, and I think the areas of whimsy that make it into the film are probably the best moments. Like we said, the vignette with the history lesson with the English politician speaking French, and also uh, Eye of the Tiger towards the end. The awful singing yep, yep, yep. rendition of that was amazing. And then that's something that's not at all in the comic book completely for the film but it works really well very funny moment just brilliant i just wish there were more of them. yes i agree i i really liked eye of the tiger though um and that is something you couldn't have done in the book so i think that was an excellent way of exploiting the medium of the movie to do something you couldn't do in the book yeah those janky movements the puppet like movements that the characters in the history lesson were doing as well it's something that could only be done in a moving picture yeah. medium i will say the book does not have a framing device And the movie does have a framing device, which is her waiting at Paris Orly Airport. Yeah. And did you understand why they had used that framing device? Because I kept expecting it to be used for something at the end, and then it just sort of faded, and I was a bit like, what's been... Yeah, I I agree. I was expecting it to be her going back for her grand's funeral or something along those lines. I wasn't sure. And then it just, like you say, she gets in a taxi, she leaves. It was completely redundant. And it takes away a lot of the drama as well. You know that this character grows up to be in an airport in the future, so you know that the character is safe because you have seen the the end result. I mean, I know, obviously, any recent autobiographical piece, they are probably probably alive and well but yeah as a framing device for the film i just felt it's wholly unnecessary and just there for a bit of color in the film almost because when it came in i thought oh like i guess the movie's going to be in color and perhaps the posters i've seen are in black and white to evoke the comic and then the majority of the movie is in black and white and i sort of thought maybe they wanted to lull people who don't go and see black and white films into a false sense of security before starting the movie proper but that might be a bit cynical of me i don't perhaps. know also it mean that they would had to have gone seen a film called persepolis with no forward knowledge not seeing a trailer and and are the kind of people who decide whether to stay in a film or not because of the first 15 seconds they see some (laughs) color and go right well we're staying oh it's gone black and white oh it's too late now i've decided to stay (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah that's fair i will say so on on letterboxd i rated it four out of five and on goodreads i rated it five out of five so it is kind of you're going from perfect to still really good you're not you're not yes. like we're, we're talking about we're focusing on the differences and most of those differences are things we dislike but when i i don't want to make it sound like i didn't like the movie because i loved the movie but i really loved the yeah, book definitely i think if i hadn't have read and then watched in such close proximity i would have enjoyed the film a lot more mm. i really liked the film but sitting there the whole time you're thinking oh why have they cut that oh why have they missed out that bit? i really liked that bit from the comic book that should have been left in yeah why have they changed that i have recently joined letterboxd with you i saw your review your four star review and i held off on reviewing myself because i didn't want to spoil it but i agree with you to be honest four stars is is about where i'm going to sit this as you say the comic book to me is for that subject matter a near perfect rendition mm. of that story you know i can't think of anyone telling that story i mean not least because it's majan satrapi's story but that style of story yeah. any better I think that's really well done. It's funny. It's informative. It just hits all the right emotional beats all the way through. Whereas I think the film just has a couple of those little stumbling blocks, which, as I say, I don't know if there's more to do with the fact that I've just read the comic and those things are actually lacking in the film or if it's just by contrast. But I still enjoyed that. Yeah, I thoroughly agree with you. 